In this video, we will look at a few examples to practice working with tangent lines and circles. In example A, it says, in circle A, CB is tangent at point B. So this segment right here is tangent to the circle at point B. So point B is the point of tangency. Find AC, so we're trying to figure out the length of AC, reduce any radicals. So because the circle is called circle A, that means that A is the center of the circle, which means that AB is a radius of the circle, which means that this angle right here has to be a right angle because it is an angle formed by a radius and a tangent line. So you have to realize that in order to be able to solve this problem. Once you know that's a right angle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem on the right triangle to solve for side AC, which is the hypotenuse. So if we call that side X, we know that 5 squared plus 8 squared has to equal X squared, and therefore 25 plus 64 equals X squared, so 89 equals X squared, which means that X equals the square root of 89. So that means that the length of AC equals the square root of 89. All right, let's go to example B. Find DC in circle A. Round your answer to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so this is the same circle we had before, and we just figured out that the length of AC was the square root of 89. And we're going to be dealing with hundredths here, so let's approximate 89, square root of 89, as a decimal. Okay, so the square root of 89 is approximately 9.43. Now, we're trying to figure out the length of DC right here. And it might seem like there's no way to figure that out, but we actually know something. We know that the radius of the circle is length 5. That means that any segment that connects the center to the circle itself will be length 5 including this segment right here has to be length 5. So if all of AC is 9.43 and AD equals 5, we can figure out DC by doing 9.43 minus 5 to get 4.43. So that means that the length of DC equals 4.43. And you wouldn't be able to do that if you didn't realize that AD right here is also a radius of the circle. And we already knew the radius of the circle was 5 because we knew what AB was. All right, let's look at example C. Find the perimeter of triangle ABC. All right, so we have a circle that's been inscribed in a triangle meaning it's inside the triangle, and touches that triangle in three points. So that means that all of these three sides of the triangle are actually tangent lines to the circle. And one thing about tangent lines is the length of the two segments from tangent points of tangency to where the tangent lines intersect are always congruent. So that means these two green lines have to be congruent, so that means they're each 4. Similarly, down here, these two segments have to be congruent, so they will each be 7. And over here, these two segments have to be congruent, which means they must both be 6. So now we can figure out the perimeter of the triangle by just adding up the lengths of all the sides. That's what it means to find the perimeter. So we'll be adding up 6 plus 4, that's this side right here, plus 4 plus 7, that's this side right here, plus 7 plus 6, and that will give us the perimeter. And we get 34, so that means that the perimeter equals 34 units.